So the topic today is about relationships and somebody sent me a question about how to basically get your partner to be up to your level of like maturity or spirituality or wisdom or something like that. Or say you're enlightened, but then your partner's not. Like how to get your partner up to your level of like enlightenment or consciousness or awareness. Um, I think it's very hard, man. <laughs> I don't. I don't yeah, think. I don't think I you mean, could. I'm thinking like, man, how am I gonna do that? <laughs> I don't think you could force it. Like, you definitely can't force it. And I think. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't even know. Like, I think sometimes you just have to accept that certain people might not ever get to that level of understanding, or they might get to that understanding after. You guys separate, um, but I I feel that a lot of times people they take relationships for granted, like for example, like a marriage in a way kind of solidifies things and be like, oh, you know, this person's gonna be with me no matter what, so I don't really need to put effort towards bettering myself as a human. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think the leverage that you have in a relationship is to say, you know what, if if I don't like being around you because you're not giving me the right energy, then I have the right to leave and either be alone or find somebody else that I connect better with. Like, that's the leverage that you have. And with that leverage, you might be able to influence the person to seek towards bettering themselves. Like, if I make, like, a simple analogy opposed to the spiritual but say somebody like loves to drink alcohol and then you're trying to influence them not to but then they still want to keep drinking it and then you come finally say you know what it's either the alcohol or me and then they choose the alcohol and then you leave then it, it, that's like the only way that kind of makes them well do they really value the alcohol over you and then when you did leave maybe they're like you know what um it's not worth it. I'd rather be with this person than to drink alcohol. Then they might they might start seeking towards some change to better themselves in that area. Or they might be like, well, no, alcohol is more important, so I'm just not, you know, I don't care if you leave. You know, but it's like that. you need to have that leverage. It's almost like working at a job, and then they're like, well, if you work harder, we'll pay you more. But if you don't work harder, then we're going to fire you. Then you have like... There's a motivation to like either work hard or don't work hard. You know what I'm saying? But if they're gonna be like, well, we're just gonna give you a raise no matter no matter if you work hard or if you just don't work at all, we'll still give you a raise. Then there's no like motivation for people to seek towards like bettering themselves, you know? And I think in a relationship, one of the leverages you have is just that that basically, you know, making that decision to basically say, hey, you know what? If I don't feel that we're right together because we're not meeting up to each love each other in our in the spiritual level, then I think that it's better that I move on. You know, and I think that that's one of the only ways. I mean, to give motivation for people to try to better themselves within a relationship. Now, when a person's not in a relationship, then it's self-explanatory. Well, why aren't you in a relationship? Well, probably. They got to do a lot of self-work in order to, they need to work in that to, to attract somebody that wants to be with them. You know what I'm saying? But you see it happen a lot. It's like people, that like they'll work out a lot when they're single because they want to attract somebody. And when they finally find somebody, then they stop working out because they got the person that they wanted. Yeah. And then the other person has the same mentality. So then they both just basically get old and obese together. You know? Yeah, that's what happened to a lot of marriage too, you know. Yeah. And they get married, they get so fat, and then they yeah. can't climb the stairs anymore. <laughs> yeah, and that's the same thing that goes to that to the spiritual work. It's like you know what, like before they get married, it's all like oh you know, acting like they're all spiritual, but then after they get married, it's just like it just goes out the window. Like it was all a facade, you know. So yeah. it's kind of like. There, there needs to be that motivational factor where it's like, like you got to work 
harder towards your inner growth if you want to be with me in this way. But if you don't, then I don't have a problem being my, by myself or I don't have a problem finding somebody else that's going to meet me at my level. You know? I mean, that's when I think about it when it comes to relationships. You know, it's like there's got to be some leverage to work with. Yeah, some people might think of that like, you know, oh, he's just, he's just acting like he's superior. No, I mean, it's not that you're superior to the person, it's just that, you know, we gotta be on the same page. If we're not, then I can't be with you, you know? I mean, it's just, it all has to be like, discussed and communicated about to figure out like which what each partner wants out of the other and then the communication has to be clear and then basically it has to be determined like you know what if if you don't meet up to these standards of which I would want in a partner then you're not the right partner and we shouldn't be together or I should find somebody who who can meet up to my standards yeah. You know, but if you're not like, like if you don't have any, like if you don't stand your ground at all, and you'll be like, well, I'll still love you if you smoke, I'll still love you if you drink, I'll still love you if you abuse me, I'll still love you if you, like, you know, beat our children, I'll still love you if you're taking drugs, I'll still love, like you just don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, like, tell them anything of which you would want out of them, and you don't ever like say that you'll move forward without them then then why would they even ever want to better themselves in any way they'll just do whatever they want to do knowing that you'll always be there yeah you know but you have to have like the strength in yourself to say you know what like i don't need this person this person's holding me back but if i cut this person off then it's basically just cutting off dead weight you know and then when you do that yeah. And then you start spending time with the person, then the person might be like, well, like, I miss this person in my life, and I need to change because I, I want to be with this person. You yeah. know? So. Yeah, you know, maybe they, they might want to change, um, but it's just certain things that, that are holding them back from being this way. Yeah, another thing I also noticed is just that like people's time to grow are different. So you can't just bring two 25 year olds together and be like, alright, they're both at the same level of intelligence. They're both at the same level of spiritual growth. It doesn't happen like that. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody might reach spiritual enlightenment at the age of 32. Somebody else might do it at the age of 42. Somebody else might do it at the age of 22. It's like different for different people. So. If you meet somebody and they're not at your spiritual level, sometimes it's just not meant to be because they're just not at your level. You know, and and they're not the right person. They might be attractive. You know, they might be somebody that 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 you're physically attracted to and that you want to sleep with, but it doesn't mean that they're there at your level spiritually. You know? And that's like different, you know, because you can sleep with somebody that's not spiritual because it's all based on lust. But if you want yeah. this person to be like your life partner, then the spiritual is a necessity. True. And then that takes that that becomes very important. Yeah, because like if you want to build a family, you talk a legacy you're building too. You don't want to build a, a weaker legacy. You want to build a stronger one, you know? Yes. That's something really important. Exactly. Exactly. That's why you got to put a lot of energy in finding the right partner because, like, everything makes a difference. You know what I mean? Like, if, a, if you find an alcoholic as a partner, that alcohol is going to abort the baby. You know what I'm saying? Or you, or you find a partner that has HIV, well, the, well, then the baby will probably have HIV, too. Yeah, definitely. You know? Or yeah, I like, feel like... Every, even mental, mental, like, mental instability, 
Like if you have it, the children's probably gonna have it too. You know? Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's all important. Like, there's a difference between finding a life partner and then like a sex partner. You know what I'm saying? Like, a <laughs> life partner is like, you know, I want this person, you know, to create a family with this person in the future. And then a sex partner is just more like, hey, I just want to have fun with you. Mm-hmm. You know, so you got to figure out what you want, you know? Yeah, and also, um, I think there are partners when you can try to be in a relationship with. And sometimes it might end up working out, you know, if the person is on call with you. You know, I'll, maybe I could tr- call these like tryouts, right? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Maybe that's where I should start too, you know, that I have no partners at all sometimes. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, like relationships, very difficult, especially when you have kids, man. It becomes extremely hard. Because the person might not be the right one for you, but then you have a kid with them, and then you're like, man, shit, now I'm jacked, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) 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 You know? (laughs) Man. So, it's not easy, man, it really isn't. It really is not easy. Yeah, kids, man, they're... I mean, it's not that I don't love kids, but, you know, they're just hard to handle, man. Yeah. I already handle, like, five kids, like, <laughs> I give props to you. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it's, it's, uh, right now, they're, 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 like, they're really good at listening and following directions, and they're really good kids. The struggle is more like, just, it's like the freedom of not being a parent and being like on your own, like you gotta, in a way you almost gotta give that up almost like the rest of your life, it seems. And that's the, that's the struggle. You know what I'm saying? That's the struggle. That, that's, it's an unfortunate struggle. But it's like, not only do you have to dedicate 18 years of your life to the kid, but you probably had to dedicate even more on top of that. Because the marriage is expected to be forever, not just like for 18 years, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you get married and like, alright, you know, it's going to expire in 18 years. No, they're like, alright, you're married, so now you're married for life. And then it's <laughs> like, you know... Um, yeah, it, it's no Hollywood marriage where, you know, they just made for like three months and then they divorced, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, you gotta basically, basically you gotta sacrifice, like you gotta sacrifice some things in your life if you want kids. Not just some things, you gotta sacrifice a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, imagine Bruce Lee, he just didn't, he wasn't in Hollywood because he had to stay home and take care of the kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, 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 we wouldn't even be talking about him right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody even know about Bruce Lee because he's at home taking care of the kids. He's not in Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like, yeah. just imagine like what the women go through. It's like they go to college, they got this degree to be a lawyer, and then they get pregnant and they just stay home and take care of the kids. You know what I'm saying? It's like... You, you like work so hard, like three decades to get to a social position or, or whatever position you want to be. And then all of a sudden you have kids now and then now you give it all up, you know? Yeah. So it's, um, it's definitely a challenge. But then at the same time, it was your decision to make, it was, you, it was your decision to do that, you know? Like, you decided to have the kids, and because you decided to have the kids, this is what it means. Like, this is your life now, you know? Yeah. So. I mean, there's positives and negatives, man. Because, I mean, being, um, 
single ain't fun either, you know what I'm saying? Are <laughs> well, you attacking me? <laughs> I'm just saying, man, it's not fun being single either, so. True, it, it's not fun to be right. You know? Yeah, because, like. Because, like, you. It, 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 it's hard to not do that, but sometimes you feel like some sort of like, you know, envy. A lot to do. Damn, why can't I get a beautiful girl like that, you know? Shoot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it's, it never ends, man, because even um, if you do find a beautiful woman, you probably want another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like. It just doesn't end, like, it's just like, you gotta learn how to, like, cap that. Be like, nah, you know, this is it, no more, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just, it's hard, man. That's why relationships have problems, because the men, it's like, they're, they're built to want more. So, like, every woman yeah. ends up becoming upset at their man, because their man always wants more, you know? True. So, that's why every woman gets pissed, you know, at the dude, you know, so... And then, yeah. and then the man has to learn how to redirect his energy in a positive way, man. Yeah, and the man, and the man all of a sudden wonders why is she upset with me. Well, well, you you messing with another girl, man. Like, how is she not getting? How can she not get upset? <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. It's, it's a tough Maybe situation. Maybe that's why women are saying men are dumb, though. <laughs> well, they don't understand because they don't have, like, testicles. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't... They don't understand, you know? They don't have, like, that sex drive that men have. So they just can't understand. You know? They just can't. Just like, just like we can never understand what it's like to, like, give birth to a child. We can never understand that, you know? Yeah. Lock the door. So, there's always going to be, yeah. like, conflict. Yeah. Yeah, just like minorities and, um, and the whites, you know, they'll never understand what we go through. I mean, yes, you know, there's some whites that are actually good people, but they'll never understand what we go through right now and what we went through. Yeah, I mean, some of them might, like, you might have a white person that, um, she might be obese and then she gets picked on her whole life, you know? Yeah. And then she might understand what it's like to be a minority getting picked on because of your race, you know? Yeah. Sometimes they could go through certain experiences that get them to see things differently. Yeah. Or if they go to, like, another country where... It's like they're like the only white person and everybody around them is like a different race, you know? Yeah. Then they, they might... But, um, I think if they're in Haiti, though, I mean, there's more... I mean, the Haiti is full of blacks, but it's 